Hello gorgeous people, how the dickens are you? Today, the whole thing has got a bit of an Arabic feel to it. Bit of an Arabic feel. I'll tell you all about it on the other side. So I don't know how you feel sometimes when you look at other people and you compare yourself to other people and kind of their progression through this process. You know, and sometimes you might look at people and say, wow, they're really, really coming on. And then you might look at people and go, where on earth are they going to with this? Where are they going to? Now, I know that some, I've gone through all of those feelings of looking at somebody going, I'm not sure that that's the right path. Not sure. Or, come on, get a move on. You know, you've been stuck in that place for so long. Come on, get out of it. Now, we know that that's the, our ego, right? Our ego, which loves to make comparisons, loves to make comparisons. If it compares other people to you and you lose, it punishes you. It makes you feel really bad. If it compares you to other people and you win, it feels really good. The pat you on the back goes, very good. Well done. Yeah. There, you're very humble. In fact, I don't know anybody more humble, humblier than you. Yeah. So that's the ego. So it's a constant, it's a constant work in progress with us to manage that situation. So I was talking to uh, the emissaries about that kind of thing, you know, that I catch myself doing and I've got to kind of pull myself back from it. And, you know, my, my anthem is none of your business, Gordon. That's kind of what I say here. When I catch myself, I go, oh, that's none of your business, Gordon. So the emissaries were saying something very, because we were talking about, you know, moving forward. And they said that our role now, our role is to focus ourselves completely, 100% on our progression. That doesn't mean ignoring everybody else. Right, we're here in service to others. But what they were saying was, it's our role is not to look at other people's progression, but rather to look at our progression. Because the only responsibility that we have is for our progression, not for anybody else's. So all of that, oh, I don't think they're going down the right path. None of your business, none of my business. We've really got to start reminding ourselves of that. We've got to remind ourselves of where we need to put our focus. And so the emissaries give me a nice um, analogy. And they said, look, if your focus is on everybody else, on about where they should be, how, you know, how far they've come, uh, they're going too slowly, etc. They said, it's like running back into the pack and try getting hold of as many people as you can and trying to drag them forward. Waste of time. I mean, it's a pack you're not going to be able to drag them forward. The only thing that the pack will do is slow you down. And so there's no point in running back. And you've got to, to go to the pack, you've got to run back, haven't you? Go to the pack, you've got to run back. So we don't want to do that. What they said was, our role, where we are now, because there are always people who are way ahead of us, and there are always people who aren't where we are. Our role is to be ahead and to show people the way. That's it. Just show people the way. The pack, right? I mean, there's a, there's a, a big pack coming. It's a coming. I know I, we've been saying this for a long time. I've been saying this a long time. The emissaries have been saying it a long time. But boy, the big pack is on its way. I'll tell you a story just before we continue. So my mother-in-law here in Spain, she's not a believer. Right? She's not a believer, but she does listen to everything. And we've talked to her for over the years about our beliefs and, you know, stuff like that. And she said yesterday we went to see her and she said, she's been to the hairdressers. She said, I wish that you both had been with me in the hairdressers today. And we said, oh, why is that? She goes, well, the conversation. She said there were six women in the, in the hairdressers, herself included. The conversation went from Turkey and the the uh, earthquakes the earthquakes perhaps created by something yeah 
which is interesting because there's, there are politicians now speaking out. The Turkish politicians, I also saw Romanian politicians speaking out saying they're being punished. And, and, I, and I saw another video of a man who was saying Turkey is one of the few countries that have wiped out the debt, they have no debt. And he said, we will be punished, you watch. And man, look what happened. Anyway, so that came up and people were saying, we don't believe what we're being told. Right, this is in the hairdressers. And then they got onto nine, stroke, 11. They got onto the uh, virus and all about, they didn't believe the narrative, that there were lies, blah, blah, blah. In a full conspiracy theory hairdressing session. What I took from that was, it was just a good feeling to know that, hey, you know, we're starting to become many. The, you know, six women in hairdressers. What's the likelihood that the six of them are all conspiracy theorists? Before, not much. Now, mm, I think so. I think this is where we're coming to. You know, maybe not everybody's speaking out, but but hey, you know, it's on its way. It's on its way. This, this pack is a coming is a coming. So that's what the Emirates said that we have to be the ones showing the way. We have to show the way. The last thing that we want to do is run through life pointing backwards, looking backwards at the pack. Look where they are, how terrible they are, where they should be doing more. No, none of your business, none of my business, none of our business. Don't focus on them. So I'm going to tell you a couple of stories that I think are really pertinent to this. So there's this boy in, in a mosque with his dad, okay? And they're doing the, the evening and nighttime prayers. You know, I think they have some very late prayers, okay? And so the boy and the, the dad are praying and the boy who was very sort of, you know, very focused on, on his religion, noticed that the vast majority of the people in the mosque that gone down to do the prayer and they'd fallen asleep. And they were asleep. And the boy nudged his dad. He said, Dad, 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 look, look, look at them all. They're all asleep. None of them are, are, are saying the prayers. None of them are lifting up their heads and, and, and doing the prayers as they should do. And the dad said to him, Son, I would prefer that you were asleep than to be there slandering the sleeping people. And how many times have we been, could we be blamed for doing that? Slandering the sleeping people. When in fact, what we should be doing is focusing on our prayers. Yeah. And, and it's a lesson that I am working, still working through. And it's still easy to kind of get caught up in that. You go, look at them, all asleep. Yeah. That's not where we need to be. We need to be focusing on us. Where are we going? How, how fast can we move ahead? What have we got to do to speed up our journey? The rest of them are coming. It's the same path. There's only one path. The rest of them are coming. Don't hang back for them. Run ahead. Be the front runners. Beautiful place to be. So this next story also gives a feel for that. So this Arab called Abu Hassan, he said this, the act of sinning itself doing the sin is much less harmful to the soul than the desire to sin. It's one thing to allow the body uh, the fleeting pleasure of a sin than it is to be constantly ruminating on it over and over again in the mind. When the righteous don't stop constantly talking about the sins of others ruminating on the sins of others. One might think that their insistence actually gives them more pleasure than the sin itself. And I wonder if we've ever been caught in that, where it's, we find it really cathartic to complain about the others, the sinners, the sleepers. Look at them sleeping. I don't know if you've ever met people like that, People who actually revel in hearing all of the dirty details. I've met people like that. I've often shied away from them. I remember in my work days when I worked with a lot of people, the, the gossips, 
when you would sit with them, I used to feel a very dark energy around the gossips. They would, have you heard what's going on? Oh, it's disgusting, it's disgusting. Yeah? We mustn't allow ourselves to go there either, you know? Because, you see, we mightn't identify ourselves with gossips or anything like that, but even if we're coming from a place of righteousness, if all we do is talk about the sleepers and criticize them and call them names and and it, it's awful all we're doing we are kind of we're worse than them that's basically what abu hassan said we are worse than them because we're doing it we're sinning over and over and over and over again in our mind they just do it once so our focus turning away turning away from the pack facing the light facing the new earth facing the path that takes us there and running like fuck up the path yeah despite whoever's behind us doesn't matter the coming you keep running like fuck okay with those beautiful words <laughs> those poetic words i should start writing poetry shouldn't I? these those poetic words just keep running like fuck i will leave that with you i love you all